right, we're going to give this a shot and see how many times my kiddos slam the door in the background. But hey guys, welcome. I'm Katie. I'm adding up Addingtons. If this is your first time here, I'm so glad that you have stopped by. Um, I am a mother of eight. We are former foster parents. We're an adoptive family. We homeschool. Uh, my husband owns a small business. And we just sort of cover all of the things because our intent and goal with being here on YouTube is to encourage you guys. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and stick around with us because uh, we love to get to know you and hopefully you find some encouragement along the way. All right, so um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that um, I'm having some technology problems. <laughs> This week, the hard drive on my computer is shot. Um, and so thankfully, I married the world's best IT guy, um, but I do have to try to get into his schedule. So it's gonna be a little bit before I have access to my full professional editing software and whatnot. So I'm working on my good old smartphone here and doing the best I can. So I did come up with some new footage that I didn't already have on my computer. Um, so I thought it might be kind of fun to do a little Q and A. Um, so I asked on Instagram for some questions. Um, so I have those and I'm just gonna answer them. I'll probably get a little chatty, cause I do. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. All right, so the very first question I got was, do you cut your hair? Yes, yes, I cut my hair. Um, if you don't know, my hair is really super crazy long. I actually don't even know how long it is, but when it's not braided, it comes in just above my knees. Um, but I have not worn it that way my whole life. It's been like chin length more than once. Um, I have donated uh, like two feet at a time, probably five or six times in my life. Um, and really, I only started letting it grow super long um, when I got pregnant with my third child, who is now six. Um, so this is really only like six or seven years worth of growth, and I've had it trimmed like at least four times during that time, anywhere from like four to eight inches range. Uh, so anyway, I have a video that I did with our family friend Taylor where he and I just sit and kind of chat uh, long hair care and he was actually here at my house to cut my hair that day so you can see that he takes off a good four or five inches um, in that video so yes I cut my hair it just naturally grows really stupid fast so uh, I am not a lifetime Rapunzel this is a recent development the next one was, will you ever open your home to more foster kiddos in the future? Um, and as of right now, we do not have any plans to. Um, we actually have more children than our state allows in a foster home. In Tennessee here, they um, the cap is six kids um, in your family. And um, so our first adoption of our younger two girls actually put us at numbers five and six. Um, we were granted a special exemption to adopt our oldest daughter who was already in our home at that point. Um, so that was number seven. And then I had another baby um, after that. So <laughs> we have eight kids. Um, so we have too many to open up as a traditional foster home. Um, the one exception to that could be potentially if one of our girls had a biological sibling um, show up along the line, we could um, be a kinship placement there, but um, that's a pretty big if. So um, we do not have any plans at this point. By the time we have enough of our kids age out um, or turn 18, um, then they would be considered another adult in the house even if they still live here um, by the time we have enough kids age out that will that will be another 10 years before we hit that point so that's assuming nothing else changes in those 10 years and there are no other children along the way um, it'll be a minimum minimum 10 years before we can um, do that so at this point 
I don't have any plans. We don't have any plans. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to say never because that's how you get yourself into trouble. <laughs> uh, but no plans right now. All right, next up, I was asked, what does your daily schedule look like? Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a big schedule person, or at least I don't feel like I'm a big schedule person. Um, I think other people would probably look at my life and feel like it was relatively scheduled, but um, in my head, I am much more of like a routines person. Um, we have our routines and we have all the things that we need to get done sort of settled into those routines. So um, like, for example, I am not a morning person. Uh, never have been, um, and I do not try to get up before my kids in this season of life. I have tried in the past, um, and it, my kids just wake up earlier. So um, sleep is a priority, so I sleep. Um, and I've just um, sort of taught my children how to uh, wait for me while I get dressed for the day. Um, so I do start out, I usually get up my alarm goes off at 7. I'm not usually out of bed before like 7.30. I'm a reader. I'll read through the headlines, um, a devotional, something like that. And um, anyway, then I get up. I do always get completely dressed and made up and do my hair every single day. Um, I have a video from really early in my channel about that, um, but I'll link it down below if you um, want to check it out. Um, so I do get completely dressed and ready, and then I usually get downstairs. Most of my kids can dress themselves at this point, all but one, um, and the other girls will help her. My um, youngest is two, so her older sisters will kind of help her get dressed most days. If not, I'll grab her on the way downstairs, um, and then we get rolling with um, some breakfast. I will start my first load of laundry. I'll get kids going on morning chores. Um, and then, um, my general tactic for the day, I guess would be a good word. My general tactic for the day is to start with the youngest and work my way up to the oldest. Um, so for a school day, for example, I will read with my youngest group of whoever's doing the same sunlight HBL together. Um, I will read with them while the others are either finishing chores or doing independent work or... Um, playing outside if they're done with everything else, but I'll start with my youngest ones um, and then I will send them to play and I'll do the next group, um, do all the reading and stuff with them, send them out to play or work independently or chores or whatever, and then um, work my way up to my oldest ones. So once everybody has done their read aloud, they are done with all the independent work that they can do themselves. Um, sometimes that's still morning time. Sometimes um, we don't get to that point until after lunch. But at that point, I will sit down with whoever still has like written work that they need help with. Um, so sometimes we're done before lunch. A lot of times we continue into the early afternoon. Um, we do usually eat right around noon. Um, not usually before, <laughs> but right around noon. And then right after lunch, I put my youngest down for a nap. Um, and I will either at that point, I'll sort of make sure all the laundry has been rotated. I will, um, put, you know, start the dishwasher again, um, whatever sort of those little lingering things are, um, I'll help anybody with any independent work. Um, and at that point, that's usually when we're done with sort of the necessary things for the day. Now, most of my like necessary things dishes, laundry, chores, cleanup, personal care, that kind of stuff, um, is really set on an autopilot routine. So um, my biggest thing is I usually don't try to accomplish more than one additional thing, um, sometimes two in a pretty extreme case, but if I get all of like the rote chores and routine stuff done, if I get one other thing done for that day, um, that's all I try to do. I don't try to do everything <laughs> every day. Um, so whether that's edit a video, if that is um, work on an organizing project, if that is taking a kid to an appointment, whatever, um, I only try to fit in one thing that is not part of like the plug and go part of my day. Um, 
So my youngest gets up by four. Um, I try to have dinner ready around six. Um, and my youngest five kids start getting ready for bed at seven or just before seven. They are usually in bed before 7.30. Um, and then my older ones have uh, quiet time until about nine when they go to bed and that's my time. I try to have everything done um, by the time my younger five are in bed so that I can sit and read or hang out with John um, and whatnot. And then once the older kids go to bed around nine, John and I are usually in bed by 10. So that's my day. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in any like particular routine videos or day in a life, um, that kind of stuff. So uh, let me know what you would like to see and I will work toward getting that done. All right, the next one was how do you avoid massive meltdowns when you are out and about with all of your crew together? Um, which is a great question. Uh, my kids are actually pretty good at going out in public. They're really good at traveling. Um, so, but occasionally we do have a meltdown. But um, some of the things that I work on are uh, I review where we're going and why we're going there. So, um, you know, for example, today I said we're going to Kroger to buy a Home Depot gift card. We're not going to walk all over the store. We're not going to get food. We're not going to get snacks. We're going to buy this thing and then we are going to go to Home Depot and get this thing that we need, um, which is our trick for getting extra gas points. By the way, we buy gift cards on the weekend when they're extra gas points and then we fill up our gas tank. Bonus. <laughs> but, you know, I review where we're going and why we're going there on the way um, so that they know, hey, we're not, this isn't a free for all. We're not shopping spree going to get all the candy that we see, right? We're going to this place to get this specific thing or for this purpose. Um, and then when we get there, as we're getting out of the car, before we even walk into the store, we review expectations. You need to stay with me and not run around. Uh, you need to look with your eyes. A, a quote from the movie, The Star, uh, where the camel looks at the other animals, looking at baby Jesus and says, look with your eyes. So we, the kids all say that. <laughs> um, so you need to like look at things and not touch them. Um, you need to stay right with me and you need to listen and obey right away. Um, so it's not perfect. <laughs> Um, by any stretch of the imagination, but um, they're pretty good about it and they will all kind of help look out for each other. Um, so those are sort of things I do to set us up for success. I do try to like have realistic timing set around outings. Um, I try not to leave like right at lunchtime or, you know, I try not to run over mealtimes when I can. Um, sometimes you can't really help it, but I try not to like run over meal times or nap time for the baby um, as much as possible. And the other thing is I try to keep my kids' blood sugar up. Um, we will all get snacks, I'll take snacks, um, or I'll like cut things short and come home. When kids' blood sugar is low, it's really hard for them uh, to behave appropriately. It, it just is. They get hungry, they get hangry, they, it's all over. So I've been known to like stand in a checkout aisle in the store with like a row of like whiny kids like putting my card in the machine and dancing and singing, everybody needs some calories. Uh, <laughs> because you know sometimes you just have to laugh at yourself um, or it's just not funny anymore. <laughs> so uh, calories are a big help and just timing and reviewing expectations and I try not to drag things out too long I guess would be the one other thing. Everybody's done, we're done and I quit and go home. And the next question that I got was what are some of your go-to like rote parenting phrases that you use? I know we all kind of like get to a point with our kids where we need like that broken record phase um, because they just keep asking or they we keep correcting the same behaviors or um, whatever it is so um, I think the thing that my kids hear me say the most often is oh I'm sorry 
that was not the correct answer. Would you like to try that again? Because the correct answer is yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, so, or some variation of that, like, would you like to try that answer again? Um, I use that one all the time. I will also say like, obey means right away. If I have to come make you do it, that's not obeying, <laughs> that's disobeying. Um, so I will say that one, obey means right away. I will also say like, hey, can you use some words because I don't understand fill in the blank. I don't understand screaming. I don't understand whining. Um, I don't understand shouting. Can you use words to tell me what you need right now? Because I don't understand mumbling. I don't understand whimpering. Um, and I can't help you if I don't understand. <laughs> um, so I use that one a lot. And then I think my favorite like parenting, uh, parenting phrase word is and. Um, so I will say, I love you and it's not okay. Um, that way you're not putting anything conditional on this. I love you and it's not okay to hit your sister. I love you and you may not scream at me. Um, or I'm sorry that you are sad and it's time for bed. <laughs> I'm sorry that you're frustrated and you can't hit people. Um, you know, that, um, the magic word and there leaves room for empathy and grace um, and love while still also allowing your kids the space that, uh, you know, some things are just not okay to do or say um, or treat people or, or whatever. So and, and is a magic word in parenting. Um, I use those all the so I think I am going to leave it at that for today. Um, again, my computer is a little bit out of commission, so I'm going to be editing this by hand on my phone. Um, it's going to take me a little bit. But thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you got some encouragement from it. Um, and if you want to be the first to know when we put out new videos, be sure to hit that notification bell. Uh, let me know what other questions that you have in the comments down below and I would love to get to them. And uh, let me know what other sorts of content you would like to see if you want to see my morning routine or a day in my life um, or any of those things. Let me know and we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Bye.